Hi and welcome to this video where today I'll be taking a look at the Canon 18 to 135 mil lens. This video is going to be about my experiences of using this in real life. It's not going to be an overtly technical assessment of this lens. This is going to be why I use this lens as my everyday lens and why I would recommend you guys taking a serious look at this lens if you haven't already got one. I'm actually filming this in one of my favorite locations close to home. I'm in the small nature reserve. It's run by the Canal Trust. There's a canal that runs alongside this small bird hide that I'm in at the moment. There's a bigger bird hide further down. There's a series of lakes that they have at side and it was built a couple of years ago. So the wildlife is really starting to come through now. So first things first, I've recently changed my old 18 to 135 for the new 18 to 135. This one was bought by me so long ago, I can't even remember when I bought it. It's been on several Canon bodies with me through the years. So I'll come on to why I've upgraded and the one potential downfall of this lens. So this is my new one. It's the Nano version EFS 18 to 135 lens. So let's take a quick look at it and its capabilities right now. And as you can see here, it's got a pretty standard function for a lens that you would expect. It's got the autofocus, manual focus, just a flick of the button there. It's also got image stabilization. I have currently got that set to on. I often actually switch that off. Um, quite often when shooting waterfalls, etc., moving water of any kind, then I will switch that off. Um, and also when I'm using it on a tripod, but the image stabilization does make a big difference if you're using it handheld. It also has a lock feature, which currently it's locked. It only locks at the shortest 18 mil end. If I unlock that, then we can extend that out now and you can see the full length of the lens. It also has a 67 mil filter thread, which is absolutely brilliant. I've got a magnetic filter ring set on that. Magnetic filters are absolutely brilliant, but that's a topic for another video. And I actually really love the fact that it is 67 mil. My other two lenses, the 10 to 18, and the 100 to 400 are both 67 mil as well. So actually that makes it super easy to single, simply have a single set of filters and just have magnetic rings on each of the lenses. One of the massive benefits of the 18 to 135 is its seven times focal range. 18 is equivalent to a roughly 29 on a full frame and 135 is equivalent to a massive 216 on a full frame. So you've got a big seven times zoom right there in the palm of your hands. So let's have a look at the zoom in action. I'm positioning myself above the canal now. I'm doing this vertically initially and we'll zoom in the whole range. So you get an idea of the range. I'll also do this horizontally landscape mode so that you get an idea of that too. And what about its close-up capabilities? Just look at this old lock gate line here. You can see how close I'm getting. Everything is retaining its focus brilliantly. Absolutely brilliantly. You can see how close before it starts to lose that. So let's just zoom in as well. Let's take it to the 135. Just look at the detail that it's picking up in that. Just starting to lose it about there. Absolutely stunning capabilities. One thing to really notice about this lens is the speed and the silence of the autofocus. Absolutely phenomenal. And what about sharpness of this lens? Now, I had noticed within my old 18 to 135, if I was really pushing this lens, then actually I would have a little bit of softness starting to creep in right when it was really closed down and when it was right. Absolutely fine in the middle range. I've had this lens now for roughly three months and I've noticed a marked step up in the sharpness of the images, both at the bottom end, at the f3.5 end and right at the top end of this lens as well. So again, sharpness is not something to worry about with the super fast locking on of the autofocus, the image stabilization if you're hand holding, the sharpness is actually value for money. This is absolutely brilliant. You could spend 10 times more on a lens and actually not get such good sharpness. Because at the end of the day, this lens is actually built for Canon APS-C cameras. And therefore, that sharpness is factored into that for the body that you may have. And anecdotally, what I have noticed is quite often, because I do a lot of landscape using tripod, I'm very often in the kind of F8, maybe the F13 up to F16-ish kind of zone. The images, the sharpness is absolutely brilliant. 
and we all are kind of aware of the the depth of field absolutely brilliant so if you do want to blur the background say or the foreground drop it down to f3.5 if you've got it down at the 18 mil end at the 135 it goes up to f5.6 but that's still sufficient to give you that narrow depth of field when shooting your subject matter now one of the things that i've seen in some commentaries on this lens is the ballooning effect and the lens aberration at the 18 mil end and this is a natural phenomenon of lenses wouldn't you go wide angle and the reality is that yes technically it will do that but in landscape photography you are not going to notice that i notice it a little bit when i am doing some maybe architectural or street photography and you can see the aberration but within the 90d you can actually do lens correction and also within software such as Lightroom, Photoshop or whatever editing software you may be using, you can actually also correct that as well. Um, I probably do that lens correction to probably 5% of my images max um, because it actually isn't an issue that I'm finding with this lens in real world. So yes, technically it may do that, but in the real world, you're not gonna find that to be an issue. As for weight on this lens, the weight is so minimal. It's so well constructed. It's really tight, fits onto the body brilliantly. It balances with the body, absolutely brilliant. It just feels so natural to hold. So where does the 18 to 135 fit in a lens portfolio? At the bottom end, I've got the 10 to 18, superb for those ultra wide angle landscape captures and pictures that we may want to take when we've got a grand vista in front of us. And I've got the Sigma 100 to 400, which is fantastic for zooming in on features, um, both in the landscape, also wildlife. And I've used this for aviation photography as well. So why have I upgraded from the old 18 to 135 to the new 18 to 135, I hear you ask. Let me just put that to one side. And the reason is pretty straightforward, really. Despite the age of this, the actual lenses aren't weather sealed. So I've got a weather sealed body. The lenses themselves aren't weather sealed. So they, they say that they're dust, but, but this one now has quite a bit of dust inside it and it was starting to impact the Im images. So if I was doing anything above about F20, you could start to see the dust specs, which is a pain. It really is a pain because then they have to be edited out. And quite often, if I was doing some ICM photography, you could see the specs in the image and then I'd have to do a little bit of editing. That to me is the biggest downfall. The new one still isn't fully weather sealed, which is a bit of a letdown. But having said that, this lens, I, as I say, I can't even remember when I bought this. It was so long ago. I think I've, I had a 600D before the 90D. And before that, I had a 2000D. I've had this for over 10 years. So actually a little bit of dust is to be expected. That to me is the only negative I can possibly think of for this lens. But after over 10 years of use, absolutely brilliant value for money. I did a scan of the market when I wanted to change my old Canon 18 to 135. And the only viable option for me was the new Canon 18 to 135. The other OEM ones out there just did not have this kind of ideal range and this kind of quality and this kind of speed to fit into my existing lens portfolio. So in conclusion then, I totally recommend this lens. Super fast, super balanced, super light, absolutely brilliant range. This is used on probably 60 to 70 plus percent of my images. So this is used for the vast majority of my images because it is just my go-to lens. It has such great range, super versatile, absolutely brilliant. Could not recommend it enough. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that this has proven useful. Remember to check out some of my other equipment review videos and do remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Your support is massively appreciated. Um, really enjoying doing this channel and hopefully you'll find it useful too.